it doesn't feel like that. It's speed. Sucks Everything's... Oh, and around, we've got cars on the track already involved. It's Kyle Busch, the 16 of Greg Biffle's involved. Looks like Denny Hamlin in the 11. And this is exactly what you didn't want to see as a crew chief, Steve. Cars getting torn up. These are their primary cars. Yeah, I mean, you're kicking Carl yourself Edwards. now if you're in this crash. Did you really need to be out there? I mean, Kyle Busch coming off his win at Sonoma, come, gets back to Daytona, involved in an accident early. You see Jamie McMurray. You see Kyle Busch's car here heavily damaged i mean that's definitely going to the back yeah there's there. a lot of backups that we're going to be seeing now after this incident this is exactly what you both were talking about running so close in a race you would get even closer but obviously someone got too close it's just a classic case you see that the 18 and the two are running nose to tail the 18 moved up the two got down the 18 kind of came across his front bumper and once he spins Everyone's in a pack. There's 25 cars in a pack. There's nowhere for the 9, for the 11, for the 16, anywhere for those guys to go. Cars got collected in this. Martin Truex Jr. in the 78 up against the wall. Jeff Gordon with a good move. 24 of Gordon stayed right down by the double yellow line, was able to avoid it. Sam Hornish, he comes in here. He's, you know, nothing he can do. I mean, there's nothing he could have done different right there. 10 laps of racing to go. And around goes the pack in the middle. Darrell Wallace Jr. gets caught up. The big one happens just as they go through the trioval. Back up into the wall hard, Brent Poole. Eric Almarola caught up in this in the 98. The caution comes out. Point here, guys. Good to see that wind and net coming down. He had a hard hit head on impact. That was a big hit. Let's take another look at how it happened. So Brendan gone in the middle there. Ryan Reed gets hit by the three car, pushes him into Brendan gone, and then it's on from there. Daniel Suarez caught up in this as well. Regan Smith. Look at the job right there. Casey Kane in the 88 gets on the brakes. The crash happens, gets off the brakes, back on the gas to drive out of it. So you see right here, the three is pushing the 16, trying to help him. He, do, he doesn't want to spin this car out. He's trying to help him, push him towards the front. He gets a little to the right rear, causing the 16 to turn left. It hits the 62, which picks up the six. And then as they come back up the racetrack, there's nowhere for these guys to go. Scott's in his mirror just looking. And now up against the wall. He gets into the wall. Brian Scott trying to block into the wall. And he goes. The caution comes out again. Brian Scott doing what you said, trying to slow the momentum down, did it too late. There's the damage to the two. Let 84 laps. See Brian Scott on the bottom, Elliot Saddle on the outside. Elliot's getting a big push. Brian tries to go in front and block, and Elliot's already there. He did what he needed to do, he just did it too late. The move was made too late to try to put the block on. Uh, once they get that far up, you just got to hold your spot and take your punishment. You see here, there's a big run coming, and the move, it's, it's just, I mean, there's nothing he can do. Elliot Sittler is clearly there all the way up to his quarter panel, and when he turns in front of the field, you can see all the debris fly. And around they go, the 38 goes sideways. David Gilliland sideways as they come out of turn number four. Also involved, the 22 of Logano, the 32. Multiple cars involved in this one. Joey Logano, damage to the right rear. It's the 26 of Jeb Burton involved. You see right here, the 38's coming down to change lanes. He just, there isn't room. He comes across the front bumper of the 15, spins him to the bottom, and it's the field very tight. You see farther back into the field, the 16 and the 10 get to the back, and the 22 spinners come across the track. And that's what happens in these tight packs when there's a spin way up in front of the pack. Everyone gets out of the gas, and it's so hard when you're only a couple feet apart. Another hard impact there with the 32 and the 38. Carl Edwards, a wild ride coming out of turn number four. He gets it going straight once again. He was running in the 13th position. It looks like a one-car incident. The yellow flag has come out. You can see him, he just got loose all by himself, and now he's he's got it locked down. He's on all that asphalt. You know, we talked about getting grass out of racetracks. That's why right there he was able to keep control. He did make a little bit of contact. You can see the rear quarter panel bent, but not nearly as bad as it would have been with the grass down there. Oop. Oh, we got a crash. Pass. Crash. Big, well, yeah, it's starting to get big. Oh. It's big now. It got big. 
Another big one in turns one and two at Daytona. You look at Brian Scott in the 33. Fire underneath that car. He'll have to come to a stop. Fire, fire extinguishers fire putting that out. The 42 of Kyle Larson completely sideways. He gets down in the apron. You see the sparks where the track bar mount hits the ground. He saves it, but he comes up the track, has no choice but to connect the connect with the 19, who then starts to spin. Brad Keselowski gets a face full of sparks. The 17 does go around, and now the track is blocked. Now these guys are trying to find a hole through, and the two gets woed up, and the three kind of gets woed up, but then you see Carl Evans goes back up the track, and here comes Brian Scott with a full head of steam, makes big contact with the back of the 19. You can follow Miss Brent Cup as the big one's happening once again, coming out of turn number four. Into the wall, Kyle Larson. Multiple cars sideways. Martin Shrex Jr., a lot of damage to the front end of his car. Eric Almarola also involved. There's Kyle Larson. Damage to the front end. We've seen this time and time again. The 20 tries to come down on the 5. I don't know if he actually makes contact with the 5 or just the air gets him loose. Man, and then it's just a mess, right? When you have a trouble in front of that many cars, there's just nowhere to go. You see the nine spinning, trying to avoid it. Once the smoke is, is that thick, there's just nowhere to go. All these cars behind them right now, they're just fine, trying to find somewhere to go, but there just never is. Uh, you just keep piling in. You're, you got, you're on the brakes. The guys behind you are running into you. You know, it's just a big, it, this is this is plate racing. This is what we talk about. This is Running in the fifth position. So Jeff Gordon right behind him. He cleared. Which line does he go to? Now Harvick's not quite clear. Harvick's on the outside of him. Now, boom, he didn't make a commitment. Oh, and around goes the car behind him. That's the six, or excuse me, the nine. A very close call there for Sam Hornish Jr. in the nine. The caution comes out. Now we're getting closer to the possibility of a green-white checker. We've seen this. got together. Yeah, we have. We've seen this time and time again. You see the splitter makes huge contact with the grass. The car starts to bounce. Luckily, it lands on all four and just continues to spin. But we've seen this. The nine goes to make a move, looks for that inside line, wasn't clear of the one, drives across his nose, ends up spinning through the grass. Tore the splitter completely off when it grabbed the grass initially. And then once again, hit hard and up into the air. A wild ride for Sam Hornis Jr. He's still driving it. Look at those hands. Still driving it. Dale Earnhardt Jr. to the bottom of the track. Jr. will win at Daytona. And the big one happens behind them. Oh, my God. Austin Dillon into the catch fence. All the crews getting out to that car to assist these drivers. Thumbs going up from all the crew members and the crowd roars. Look at the catch fence on the front straight. Members pulling. Austin Dillon out. He's walking. The damage to the four of Kevin Harvick. What an incredible sight to see Austin Dillon walking away from that three car that is demolished. Yeah, the 11 gets kind of stuck in the middle there and gets comes across the four's bumper as he does. He spins back in, gets the three airborne, and he just gets projected off the other cars right up into the fence. He went from the bottom of the racetrack over two rows of cars and into that catch fence. Here we go. You can see him on the bottom. Rex starts in front. He runs in the back of the 24, gets up on the 11. Now he's on top of the 50.5, and now it's just a long little run. 
Yeah, watch the car that. stop. Watch the car stop. It gets into those poles, and it goes from, I don't know, what, 180, 190 miles an hour, I'm just guessing, to a complete stop. That is unbelievable. And that, it looks like a tour. That's 30. 500 pounds. That that stock car is extremely heavy. You see here after he's upside down, the two is, is spinning. Obviously, he's already lost control. Makes more contact with the three. Eleven and the four to get together. Here we are at the start finish line. It just pushes the three up into the air enough that it rolls over the top of a car. And then that momentum just continues to move him into the catch fence. Hang on. This will be a wild ride. That was Tony Stewart going underneath.